over here uh, respectfully against House Bill 805. Uh, we think it's important. Let me start off by saying this isn't about whether it's good or bad. Well, you have. tell us what Texas Impact is. Oh, sure, absolutely. It is a uh, kind of an umbrella organization. There's kind of three big religious lobbies in the state. There's the Baptists, there's the Catholics, and I guess we're kind of everybody else, the Lutherans, Episcopalians. We have 17 different uh, Protestant denominations that are members of Texas Impact. Um, and this isn't for us whether it's good or bad to have guns in church, but about the right for faith communities to make that decision for themselves and to decide what's best for them. Um, I, we think it's important for the committee to understand just how interwoven the faith community is with various state programs. For instance, it's common for religious organizations to receive money for uh, children's homes, for foster care, for health clinics, food and nutrition programs, financial literacy programs, job training. Uh, any number of housing ministries, after-school programs, and, of course, closest uh, to this committee's jurisdiction is disaster relief. Um, <clears throat> our hierarchical denominations are particularly concerned because often it's the denomination that owns the property and not the local church. So, for instance, if the United Methodist Church receives funding, for, uh, say, from, free, from FEMA for disaster relief, does that mean that they lose the freedom to regulate firearms at unrelated properties like church camps, children's homes, or parsonages? Uh, we're also concerned about how far back we'd have to trace the origin of the funds. For instance, if the denomination receives the funds from Red Cross, but Red Cross received it from FEMA, then do we lose the freedom to regulate firearms at domestic violence shelters or addiction treatment facilities or at halfway houses? Um, in a state that values limited government, these public-private partnerships leverage this pre-existing nonprofit infrastructure. Uh, as well as the private charitable giving and the volunteer hours of these organizations, all of which saves taxpayers money. Uh, our, pro our properties are really different from a lot of private business. For instance, at one church you could have a, a subsidiary ministry like at the Trinity Center downtown down the street here at St. David's Episcopal where they could easily have a daycare or a playground on a separate part of the same property. Uh, what we're asking for is the continued flexibility to control our own property because each facility is unique. We have a bunch of different, very varying kinds of property, and we would carry the liability. Um, we have been working with the author's office. They've been a, a pleasure to work with. Um, we understand that this is probably not their intent, uh, but we will continue to be in conversation with them. Um, we've also been in conversation with our member denominations. Uh, and their business and legal advisors. Um, we think that there ought to be a stakeholder process if this legislation uh, is to move forward. And if it does, if there is a stakeholder process, we would very much, uh, our membership, our member denominations would very much like to be included directly and not just represented through us. Uh, we thank you for your time this afternoon and we look forward to working with all of you. So, so oh, go ahead. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Mr. Houston, um, have you seen those cards that, that some folks at, uh, promote concealed carry and open carry to take into businesses that don't allow for them to carry their guns on the premises. They have a little card saying, we're not going to patronize your business or dollars are going to go somewhere else. Have you ever seen those? Uh, no, sir, I haven't, but um, <clears throat> I get the idea. I mean, do, do you suspect that, you know, maybe these folks need to print a card saying, you know what, we're not going to pray at this church because you don't let me bring my peace in. Uh, I mean, I, I, again, I just, no disrespect to you, Representative, like what do we need to be carrying guns into church for? I mean, what, what, kind, what, what? You what? must not be preaching at your church like they do some of my artists. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm shocked. I mean, I'm shocked that, and I go to a very yeah. conservative Catholic church, yeah. and I, if, if my <laughs> preacher cool. started saying, or my priest, or I started seeing people in the pews with guns, I'm thinking, what, what, what in the world are we doing in church with guns, of all the places? I mean, I'm, I know I'm preaching to the choir, pun intended. <laughs> Uh, but I'm just, I mean, I mean, I, maybe it's, I don't know. I just had it up to here with that. That's just nonsense. It's church. It's church. And people want to carry a gun into church. Just, right. I'm sorry. Well, I think my pastor literally carries one every time he preaches for public safety reasons. His safety. Church, if I may. Man. So it's a, it's a kill zone for people. That's the way people look at it. You well, show up and nobody has a gun there except for the guy coming in whose estranged wife is being protected by the church because he's been abusing her and she's trying. I mean, it's, you see, there's situations where where it could come up where you get somebody that's uh, irrational showing up. I think that's where this comes from. I don't think it's a heart of we all need guns in church. I get that, but I mean, that situation exists. For everything. So yeah. now, I mean, my point is, my... 
Is it at some point, can we just drop the paranoia about we're going to get clipped or something it, bad's going to happen? It's church. It's church. Man, what a place to die, I tell you what. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, I don't know. somebody told me this, this is an advocate for kids. Like, they know exactly where I sit and what pew I'm in every Sunday. And if they want to give me, they can come give me. I'm like, really? Like, that's that's where we're at in this world that you feel like you got to carry your gun because somebody who doesn't like you knows that you sit in pew two, you know, near the aisle, and that's where you're kneeling and praying. I just. Okay. So, uh, we'll get Representative well, Dale's position on this. So, well, I know I want to meet Jesus. I just want to take my time getting there. Yeah. So, anyways, my question's for you. Um, <laughs> is there anything in this bill that would prohibit you from posting a 30-odd six sign at any of your facilities? Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. the section that's the question one question he's talking about. Um, let me pull the bill real quick. I mean, it says right here, it's an exception to the application of this section, the property in which license holder carries a handgun. It says, is owned or learned leased by a government entity or any other entity that receives public money. So if they get money for an aftercare deal, then presumably the whole church, you couldn't do that for the church. And I think that's the the, that's, that's the way that's written. It's like, who, who, who does that mean? If, if, if they get money from Red Cross, who got money from the federal government to an after chair, after school program, does that mean that they then lose their right to to their own private uh, yeah, property our rights. Our Catholic school gets Kennedy Foundation grant money. <coughs> if that comes from the feds. <coughs> okay, so, thank you. I mean, I think I think I get that issue. I mean, it's we, we just you just I mean, it's just or entity that receives public money. We just need to make sure if it's just directly or indirectly. Then you know. Then you can decide not to take any public money. That's a problem. That's a problem with. Uh, you know, uh, private schools that take voucher money would have to do the same thing. I mean, it's just, uh, um, it just goes on. Okay, sir, thank you for your testimony. Thank you.